I recently put out an Instagram story about ask me anything, like what are your questions that you have and you would like to get my perspective or my answer on them. And remember, none of this is ever medical advice. It's just me and kind of how I interact with my private community. When people bring questions, we just kind of talk it through from potentially a different lens or a different perspective, such as the quantum biology and circadian health lens that is the foundation upon which I view um, and try to support my client's health. And so one of these questions I'm going to pull up on my phone right now has to do with things like viruses, right? It is, why do viruses or bacterial infections like Lyme or EBV affect us and what to fix in the body? And my perspective on this um, has changed quite drastically over the course of the past five years. Um, you know, I used to be a, much more a proponent of killing protocols. So for example, if a client came to me with something like SIBO, I would say, okay, well, let's get you on an herbal anti uh, antimicrobial protocol, right? Or um, if someone had symptoms of something like an EBV or a Lyme, again, I was not a Lyme, enough, a Lyme literate enough practitioner uh, at, that, at the time to be able to put them on a, um, a, an antimicrobial protocol, but we have a practitioner just an hour from here that I would send clients to, again, for that, to put them on an antimicrobial protocol. But then I started to see people with um, symptoms of Epstein-Barr, right, that would reappear or appear, right, during times of maybe trauma or stress, or say they had a car accident or, you know, and I thought to myself, huh, so stress uh, absolutely play, plays a role in this here. That's interesting. And then I also had clients who had Lyme disease who never once actually set foot in a forest or anywhere near, like in a very urban environment, who would never actually have access to being bit by a tick, never remember being bit by a tick, and then all of a sudden, again, during these periods of maybe more intense stress, started to express the symptoms and eventually even do a live blood analysis to show spirochetes in their blood and get a diagnosis of Lyme disease. And so I thought to myself, what's going on here? And this is where I really started to uh, you know, do a deep dive deeper <laughs> into what's going on with the terrain of an individual. What is it about stress that can actually allow these microorganisms to flourish? Are they there as an invader or are they there potentially as a cleanup crew when a tissue doesn't have the correct healthiness, healthiness to it, right? For lack of a better term at this point, I'll define that here in a second. And what I started to realize is if I start to work with clients on what I would call their cellular terrain, their voltage, and in the, my lens, it's having adequate amounts of exclusions on water, which gives a cell a healthy charge, a healthy voltage, a healthy pH, both in the extracellular envi uh, environment and in the intracellular environment. So if I can focus on that and then make sure drainage pathways are open, we can do things to optimize stress levels, and we can set the correct timing of the body, which is inherently a big stressor if the body doesn't have a correct circadian rhythm, an intact circadian rhythm. It inherently, that, that's a low level or actually probably a more high level stressor to the body. And so all of a sudden, I started to put these things into place, set a strong circadian rhythm, optimize exclusion zone water levels, make sure drainage, drainage pathways were open, and people's symptoms got better without having to go through a killing protocol. And so that, again, led me deeper and deeper into the, the rabbit hole that is terrain. What's, what is our terrain, and how can that actually show pathogenic microorganisms that aren't necessarily there to invade us, but are there to clean up diseased tissue, diseased cells. So as what I started to see was this pattern of a cell that is stressed because the mitochondria either are exposed to a toxin that can, that can also deplete the exclusion zone water levels. Um, a, a psychological stress can also um, impair mitochondrial function. And if the mitochondria are impaired, we're not going to have adequate amounts of exclusion zone water inside of the cell, which will lead to lowered cellular voltage. That leads to a cell that starts to create, that starts to become damaged. And these damaged cells try to secrete these extracellular vesicles into the space around them to try to clear the damage. And then that draws the attention of the immune system. And that also draws the attention of what I would call our cleanup crew now. I don't think that very, I, I rarely think that when we see viruses or when we see bacteria 
or, or, or what we call or parasites in a specific tissue, I rarely think they're there because they've invaded us and they're trying to cause harm. I actually think they're actually just taking opportunity of the fact that there is tissue there, unhealthy tissue that they can clear up. So it's a symbiotic relationship of just in the same way that when an animal dies in the woods, there's varying levels of organisms that help to decompose it and then return the soil back to optimum health and vitality. I think the same thing is happening in our bodies. And so I asked when someone has symptoms or has things like um, chronic candida, chronic Lyme, chronic Epstein-Barr, I ask myself, what, where might they be exposed to toxins? And those toxins can lower their intracellular voltage. And it's truly the voltage, the exclusion zone water of the cells that determines the health of, and vitality of that tissue. And so if we do things again to help to, yes, we might need to help to um, support redox drainage and detoxification. So essentially building charge in exclusion zone water, draining the toxins and support promoting detoxification. Yes, we absolutely may need to do that, but I don't do killing protocols at all anymore. I tackle it from a perspective of what can I do to make sure that this cell and this organ and this tissue has adequate amounts of exclusion zone water so that naturally that cell and that tissue can become healthier again, functioning, functioning again. And then the microorganisms can go away. They no longer have fuel with which they can feed off of and remain present. And instead, the body and the immune system can naturally um, kind of push them to the side and, and suppress them and kill them so that they're not, so that they're, uh, because they're no longer needed, right? And so the analogy of the forest is something that I really love and the soil and returning something that might be um, diseased and decaying back into the soil and restoring healthy soil is the same thing I see happening in the human body. And so what are things that we can do to support a healthy terrain? Well, as I alluded to, exclusion zone water is fundamental here, as is mitochondrial health, as is appropriate light signaling. That is why in my quantum reset course, I talk about all of these different things and the many ways you can utilize things like sunlight, things like earthing and grounding, various mitochondrial supports as needed, maybe things like red light therapy in order to optimize the exclusion zone water and the health of a tissue so that we don't have to worry about going in and doing a killing protocol because if we kill and there's still diseased tissue, there's still dysfunctional mitochondria, something's just gonna reappear and be another cleanup crew. Um, there's a lot more I could share about this including like why we see uh, fungal infections as a like fungal um, forms around all, all tumors, right? And like all of this says to me that the tissue is diseased and it's not about killing the cleanup crew. It's about supporting the health of the terrain. Um, you know, I talk about, uh, again, I'll talk about quinton minerals even as a means to support this. Um, I talk, I talk about having adequate mineral status in general as a means to support this. And yes, I talk about avoiding toxins, like minimizing the amount of toxins we're exposed to on a daily basis so that those toxins can't get into the tissues in the first place and start to wreak this havoc and create this diseased, dis, diseased cell, this dysfunctional tissue that requires the cleanup crew in the first place. And so, you know, um, I don't, I don't, I don't treat anything, but at the, uh, at the same time, I don't specifically key in and on killing protocols because of these exact reasons. And so if you've tried that pathway of, well, I've tried the parasite cleanses, I've tried to kill um, the Epstein bar, and I've tried to kill the candida, ask yourself, what purpose might it be serving? And what are things that I could do to support the terrain and the voltage and the exclusion zone water levels of my body and open my natural drainage pathways in case there are toxins in my body so that my body can naturally eliminate those things as opposed to me going in with this killing mentality, thinking that they are trying to invade my body.